Welcome to Stockholm University and this Nobel Walk, celebrating the Nobel laureates of Stockholm University through the buildings and locations here. The Nobel Prize is one of the most, if not the most, prestigious award in the world within science, culture, uh, and literature. It has been awarded since 1901, according to the wishes of its founder, Alfred Nobel, Swedish industrialist and inventor. In his 1896 will, he bequeathed his estate to a foundation, the Nobel Foundation, which purpose was to award prizes, prizes to those who have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. He instituted these prizes because he wanted to leave a legacy and to improve the world. And ever since 1901, when the prize was first awarded, it has been awarded to the leaders in their field. We have the Einsteins, the Hemingways, the Dalai Lamas, the Richard Feynmans, the Malalayus of Science, all over the world. And through the 20th century, the Nobel Prize has shown to be paramount. Several of these Nobel laureates have a relation to Stockholm University. And today we're going to take a look on five different places and the laureates connected to them. Please follow. Our first stop on the Nobel Walk are the aptly named Nobel Buildings. They were built in 1909, designed by architect Rudolf Enblom, and were built to be the personal home and research facilities for Nobel laureate Svante Arrhenius. Arrhenius was a towering figure of Swedish science in the early 20th century, and he became Sweden's first Nobel laureate when he received the prize in chemistry in 1903. His work was in physical chemistry. He was the first to figure out the idea of ions and how electricity interplayed with chemistry. Even though he is the father of physical chemistry, he may be most current today for his work on the greenhouse effect. Even though the greenhouse effect had been described earlier on, Arrhenius was the first one to calculate it. Factoring in how much carbon dioxide would increase and how much temperature that would lead to, he is the first to calculate the greenhouse effect. This is not part of his Nobel Prize, but other Nobel Prizes have been awarded for environmental work and the greenhouse effects. I call upon the Peace Prize laureate for 2007, Al Gore, to come forward to receive the gold medal and the diploma. IPCC, the Inter governmental panel for climate change shared the Nobel Prize with Al Gore for their work on informing the public and the scientific community about the greenhouse effects. Another Stockholm University professor was almost the one to receive that prize. Longtime professor Bart Bolin was one of the founders of IPCC and its first chairman. The plan was that he would receive the prize accepted on IPCC's behalf, but unfortunately he was too ill to travel at that time. Price's environmental work has been a long part of the Nobel Prize and continues to be so today, starting with the work of Arrhenius and the greenhouse effect. Our second stop on the Nobel Walk are the Manne Sigban buildings, named after Swedish physicist Manne Sigban who received the Nobel Prize in 1924 for his work on X-ray spectroscopy. These houses were built about a decade later, designed by architect Gustav Holmdahl. They were meant, as the Arrhenius buildings, to be the personal home and research institute for Manne Sigban. Manne Sigban himself was a prominent scholar, but not only him, but also his son, Kai Sigban, went on to fame. Manne receives the prize in 24, and his son Kai receives the prize in 1981, again in physics, for electron spectroscopy. It is rare to see these family assemblies amongst the Nobel Prizes, but we see them in the Siegbun Institute. Since its inception, the Siegbun buildings have housed many things. Presently, we see several institutions from Stockholm University, during many years, there were still accelerators and cyclotrons down below. It holds the faculty club. And since recently, also an exhibition space, accelerator, housing 
art and exhibitions. Our third stop on the Nobel walk return again to Svante Arrhenius, this time in the more current Arrhenius Laboratories, built in 1973, signed by Carl Nureyev. The Arrhenius Laboratories were named by Arrhenius, but he himself was long gone when they were built. It is hard to put a finger on who we really should associate with the university. Arrhenius, we have talked about, he was active with the Nobel Institute here. Manesigban came later to Stockholm University after his prize. Should we count him? Should we count Swedish poet and Nobel laureate Thomas Tronströmer, who received his psychology degree at Stockholm University? These things have no clear answers. One thing that we can say is that many of the Nobel laureates associated with Stockholm University are laureates in chemistry. Looking at their laureates, we see Paul Crutzen working on the ozone layer, George de Hevesy working with radiochemistry, Hans von euler schelpin working with fermentation, all different aspects of chemistry. Chemistry is also a field that was close to Alfred Nobel's heart himself. As an inventor and innovator, most of his developments and the ones that made him his fortunes are in chemistry. He works with nitroglycerin, he invents dynamite, and even though he never trained at university as a chemistry, his training at laboratories with practical work was long, and he became a chemist at heart. We can clearly say that his interest in chemistry, it was inspired it to be a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Our fourth stop on the Nobel walk is Albanova. The main building of Albanova was inaugurated in 2001 by architect Henning Larsen. Albanova is a collaboration between Stockholm University and the Royal Institute of Technology, focusing on the fields of physics, astronomy, and biotechnology. We can see the inheritance from Stockholm University physics quite clearly in this plaque behind me. This is a replica of a wall based on the old physics departments, a wall where Visiting dignitaries would sign their name where they came, a guest book, so to speak. We recognize some of the great Nobel laureates in physics on this wall. Names like Niels Bohr, Tung Dao Li, Yang, Heisenberg. One name is slightly unusual, the name Maria Geppert Meyer. Geppert Meyer is special because she's only the second woman to ever receive the Nobel Prize in Physics, which she does in 1963 for her model of the atomic nucleus. But Physicum here at Stockholm University, she was an earlier in 1956. So maybe the visitors that we see today will later on receive the Nobel Prizes. Albanova houses many research institutions. One of them is Nordita, the Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics. It was founded by one of the names of the board, Niels Bohr, the famous Danish physicist. His son was also active at Nordita as his general director and as an early member. Niels and Åke are, like the Siegbunds, family laureates. Niels physics in 22 for his well-known Bohr model of atomic physics, and Åke Bohr for models of the nucleus in 1975. Nordita houses also one of Stockholm University's present Nobel laureates. Again, physicist Frank Wilczek. Professor Gross, Professor Politzer, Professor Wilczek. You have been awarded the 2004 Nobel Prize in Physics for your discovery of asymptotic freedom in the theory of the strong interactions. It's an honor for me to convey the warmest congratulations of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. I now ask you to step forward to receive your Nobel Prizes from the hands of His Majesty the King. He is a fairly normal laureate when we look on how he received the prize and when. He was in his 50s, to be frank, that is rather young. But when he did the actual work for which he was awarded, he was much, much younger. When only 22 years old, as a grad student at Princeton, he co-published the article that would later win him the Nobel Prize. 
This price lag is a common thing. It often takes decades before a price is actually awarded. So who knows, maybe one of the articles you publish as grad students may receive the Nobel Prize down the line. Our fifth and final stop of this Nobel walk is Aula Magna. Aula Magna is Stockholm University's largest and one of Sweden's largest lecture halls. It was inaugurated in 1997, designed by renowned architect Ralph Erskine, his fifth and final building at Stockholm University. It is the place of countless lectures where thousands of students attend their classes. It is also the place of the annual Nobel Lectures in Physics, Chemistry and Economic Sciences. Each year, when the Nobel laureates arrive in Stockholm to accept their prizes, they give an address, a Nobel lecture, about their work. We are now standing inside Aula Magna at around seat 1048 at the very top. If we look down, we can see the stage where each year the Nobel laureates enter and give their Nobel lectures. These lectures are held a few days prior to the actual award ceremony. The award ceremony, where they receive their medal and diploma, is held December 10th, the day Alfred Nobel died. But the lectures, for really time constraints, are given a few days earlier. Here, the Nobel laureates get an opportunity to talk about their research, the work, why they received the Nobel Prize. They are rather short, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, and not necessarily addressed to an academic, technical audience, but rather an interested public, though sometimes it can get difficult. The Nobel lectures are the only thing that is required, really, of the Nobel laureates. In the statutes of the Nobel Foundation, it is stated that within six months, they are to deliver a lecture on the topic of which they were awarded the prize. The lectures are a key part in the Nobel Prize as a whole. They are the way that the information is spread. Who are the Nobel laureates? What have they done? Alfred Nobel wanted his prize to those who have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. And as such, spreading the knowledge is an important part. So please, come December, join us here in Aula Magna for the annual Nobel lectures. And I would like to thank you for joining this Nobel Walk. It's been a pleasure to talk about the Nobel Prizes at Stockholm University.